I am very glad to introduce our recent work, Lococo, uh, which is a new concurrency control protocol aiming to improve performance in strictly serializable distributed transactions. Our work targets as large commercial and financial systems, which often needs to handle uh, hundreds of millions of transactions per day. And the data, the amount of data this uh, system needs to process is huge and keeps increasing, which means we need these transactions to be scalable. We can shard the data into many independent different servers and transform a user's request into a distributed transaction running across a subset of these servers. So to be more specific about what kind of transaction we are talking about today, think of uh, this example, an e-commerce site that is selling both of the new iPhone 6 Plus and its case. For scalability reasons, the stock level of the two items are stored on two different servers. And now we have a customer, Marie, who is trying to purchase both the iPhone and, and the case in the same transaction. And of course, in this purchase, we need to do a quantity check before actually selling the item. And the transaction is formed as a stop procedure, and its pieces are distributed to servers to execute. And after execution, the server will reply the results to the customer. So Marie will have both her iPhone and her case. The thing with the distributed transaction is we need to apply some form of concurrency control protocols to ensure that these transactions are strictly serializable. Otherwise, in this case, for example, if we have concurrent transaction requests trying to purchase the same things, then Marie may receive an iPhone without a case. And without a case to protect, protect her iPhone, this will be what's happening in a few days. <laughs> uh, of course, this is just a joke, and I hope there are not too many Apple guys today here. Uh, but from this example, we can say that if we don't want angry our customers, it's a good idea to provide serializability. The thing, the problem with serializability is that it does not come for nothing. The concurrency and control in distributed systems can be very costly if there are a lot of contention going on in the system. Traditionally, we have two popular protocols, two-phase locking and optimistic concurrency control. And in this representative figure, we can say that with both of these protocols, the throughput of the system will drop quickly as the amount of contention increases in the system. And why is this? What's happening here? What's wrong with the conventional protocols? The problem of OCC, well, as a multi-phase protocol, it tends to abort concurrent transactions when they are likely to form a conflict. For example, with two concurrent transactions, both trying to buy an iPhone in a case, to start with, OCC will optimistically execute these pieces in the first phase, and when a non-serializable interleaving is formed, OCC will use a two-phase commit to detect this conflict and abort both, these, both transactions. This could greatly degrade the system performance. Next, let's look at the problem with two-phase locking. Also as a multi-phase protocol, two-phase locking execute the pieces in the first phase. But before the execution, each piece needs to acquire locks on the items it access. And all subsequent requests on the same item will be blocked. The system cannot proceed before the first transaction is finished with a two-phase commit releasing all the locks. And there can also be deadlocks for two-phase locking, which will further degrade the system performance. So the goal of our work is for common workloads, instead of optimistic execution followed by boards or serialization by blocking, is there any way that we can still achieve serializability without all the costs of aborting or blocking? And here comes our answer with Rococo. For the same example, when these two transactions are non-serializable interleaved on two servers in the first phase, Rococo will first detect these conflicts by tracking their arriving orders, but not executing them. And then instead of aborting or blocking, Rococo will reorder this conflict into a serializable order for execution. The key insight why we can do this 
is that we can defer the peace execution from the time the conflicts are formed and then reorder this ex execution later. To leverage our insights, we introduced three key techniques into Rococo. First, Rococo uses a two-phase protocol. Unlike two-phase locking or OCC, we do not execute pieces in the first phase, but defer the execution to the second phase. And second, we use a decentralized dependencies to track the arrival orders of conflicting pieces, identify if that order is non-serializable, and if so, deterministically reorder them. And these two techniques enable servers to deterministically reorder piece execution into a serializable order. However, not all pieces of transactions can be deferred. And these pieces restrict our reordering possibilities. To identify if reordering is always possible, we introduce an offline checking. And with offline checking, we actually find that almost all common workloads are entirely reorderable, in which case Rococo does not generate any system of works. And in the next few slides, uh, I will talk through these key, three key techniques one by one. Okay, first thing, this delayed execution model sets up a two-phase framework for Rococo. In Rococo, each transaction has two phases, a start phase and a commit phase. The start phase of a transaction is about sending all these pieces to corresponding servers to set up and collect a provisional order without actually executing these pieces. And the commit phase, Rococo will use this information just collected to establish a serializable execution order, and each server will execute the deferred pieces following this order. The trick thing here is with this two-phase protocol is how to identify conflicts and reorder them without a centralized bottleneck. And this is why we have our second technique, dependency tracking. I'll explain how it works with an example. Suppose we have two transactions, T1 and T2, uh, both trying to purchase an iPhone a case. In the start phase, let's say the first piece of T1 arrives at the server, and the server will add T1 into its local dependency graph without ex executing this piece and return this graph back to the client. And later, when the piece of T2 arrives, also arrives at the server, the server will identify that T1 and T2 are conflicting because they both modify the stock level of iPhone. And then it will, it will track this dependency information by adding to its local dependency graph that T1 persists T2 because T1 arrives earlier than T2. And the server replies its graph back to the client T2. And the similar things will also happen on the server case. But the difference is the arriving order T1, T2 is opposite on the case server. So the case server actually tracks a different dependency that T2 persists T1. And when a client receives a reply from the server, it should keep aggregating this graph until it receives the replies from all servers. And after that, the transaction goes into the commit phase. In the commit phase, the client will send its aggregated graph back to each server. And when the server receives this graph, it will then take a union with its local dependencies. It's important that a server must receive adequate dependency information before making the next move. And in this case, the server should wait until it receives the commit request of T2 because it represents a conflicting ancestor of T1. And the insight of this dependency tracking is in the beginning of the commit phase, each client and each server may have different dependencies, but in the end, each server will identify the same cycle which represents a non-serializable interleaving. And then it is, it is possible for each server to sort these transactions following any deterministic order, such as a global transaction ID. In this case, we can reorder T1 before T2 and execute all the deferred pieces following this order. Well, this protocol works, but it has a problem when supporting general transactions. In general transactions, not every piece is deferrable. For example, in a little more complex new order transaction, we not only to need to reduce the stock level with the iPhone case, but also we need to allocate a new order ID on one server by incrementing a counter, and then we use this value to insert a purchase history on another server. The first piece cannot be deferred arbitrarily because its output 
is used by other pieces as input. And for these pieces, Rococo will execute them immediately upon the arrival of the star request. But then we may have the same problem if a transaction has too many media pieces, and these immediate pieces may cause conflicts with other transactions. For example, in this artificial workload, a transaction needs to increment two counters on different servers and use the values for later pieces. And when these pieces from concurrent transactions sent to each server in a random order, and then they form a non-serialized by interleaving, and in, in this case, we cannot reorder them again because, because they are exe already executed. Well, for these immediate pieces, we have two observations. First, we find that in common workloads, there are only a few immediate pieces. And second, because most commercial systems have a fixed workload that we can apply offline check to say whether a workload is safe for reordering before runtime. Our offline checking is based on the existing wisdom from database community. In this analysis, we need to include all the transaction types in the system, and for every kind of transaction, we need to include, to include it twice because it may have concurrent instant instances. Because this offline checking is conducted before runtime, we cannot be sure which item each piece is going to access. We can only identify what table it is going to access based on user annotations. So this offline checking is conducted on a table level. And then all pieces that belong to the same transaction should be connected with sibling edges. And the pieces that may have conflict with each other in different transactions should be connected with conflict edges. And then we look for a cycle in this graph that contains both a sibling edge and a conflict edge. And each of this acid cycle represents a source for potential non-serializable execution orders. The standard solution to deal with SC cycle is to use popular concurrency and chill protocols such as two-phase locking or OCC. Well, we enhance this basic approach to consider the reordering made possible by deferrable pieces. Specifically, in this graph, we differentiate immediate pieces, showing in red, and deferrable pieces, showing in yellow. And Rococo can handle SC cycles of which all pieces are deferrable, and our example so far corresponding, corresponds to this case. As for the SC cycle that contains immediate pieces, it turns out that Rococo can also safely reorder any such SC cycles as long as they contain deferrable pieces too. So I will show the intuitions of this in the next slide. When we have an immediate piece in a transaction, we need to execute this piece in the start phase. And then when we track dependencies, we also color the dependencies based on their type. We use red edges for immediate dependencies, which represents an ordering that cannot be changed because the pieces have already been executed. We use yellow edges for deferrable dependencies that we can reorder. And then after the clients have finished collecting and promulgating dependencies, each server will observe the same cycle with both immediate and deferrable dependencies inside it. And the reason we can preserve this immediate dependency at each server is that for every cycle, there must be at least one deferrable dependency inside it, which is guaranteed by our previous offline checking in which we found no SC cycles of all immediate pieces. And with the deferrable pieces in a cycle, we can safely reach to a serialization execution order deterministically at each server without violating this immediate dependency by reordering the deferrable ones. OK, in today's talk, we only have time to focus on our main techniques. But our paper includes many more interesting details of Rococo, such as how to merge pieces together with conventional protocols if they form a cycle without any deferrable pieces, and such as how to do read-only transactions to exclude them from offline checking. And now we have finished talking about the design of Rococo, and let's move on to the evaluation. Because Rococo is designed to be a contention-friendly protocol in large, scalable system, we have two critical questions for ourselves. First is, what is the performance of Rococo in various contention scenarios? And the second, 
how does Rococo scale, especially in a complex workload where contention rate is not fixed as the system scales? To answer these two questions, we base our evaluation on the TPCC benchmark, which is the golden standard for testing databases. We did a few modifications to TPCC so that we can partition the data by district to ensure that all transactions involve multiple servers. And this is a SC graph for TPCC. It is fairly complex, fairly complex involving many deferrable pieces shown in yellow and some immediate pieces shown in red. From this graph, you can see that there are many SC cycles here, but all of them include deferrable pieces. And all cycles include deferrable pieces are safe for Rococo to execute. And also, two of the five transaction types that represents less than 10% of the workload are not included in this graph because they are read-only transactions. In our first test, we use eight servers, with each server serving 10 districts, and increase the number of clients to create more contention. The x-axis in this figure stands for concurrent requests per server, and the y-axis stands for the throughput of new order transaction in the mixed workload. We can see that in this figure that with low contention level, all protocols, Rococo, surface locking, and OCC, performs well. But as the contention increases, the performance will of OCC and surface locking would both drop significantly, where OCC drops because the boards due to the contentions, and two-phase locking drops because the boards due to deadlock detections. Because Roco Rococo is more contention friendly, that is, performance is much better than two-phase locking and OCC. The performance drop of Rococo is caused by increasing size of a graph due to more concurrent transactions. The similar results can also be seen in the commit rate and latency. Here, the x-axis doesn't change. The y-axis is the commit rate of a new order trans transaction. As you can see that the commit rate of both two-phase locking and OCC eventually dropped to lower than 20%, which means that each transaction has to retry five or six times to succeed. And this also results in much higher and inconsistent latency, where OCC can cost at most over 600 milliseconds and two-phase locking about 400 milliseconds. But for Rococo, because it doesn't abort, each transaction only needs to be issued only one time to commit. So Rococo has a much lower and consistent latency within 70 milliseconds. In our second test, the scalability test, we fix the number of clients per server and increase the number of servers from one to 100. Because in this scaling, we have a fixed number of items so the contention rate actually will slightly increase as the system scale. And in this figure, x-axis stands for the number of servers, y-axis stands for the throughput of new order transaction. We can see that the throughput of OCC almost drops to zero because there are too many aborts as the system scales. As for, as for two-phase locking, it will stabilize after its peak throughput. You can also see that it has a slightly drop because of the aborts due to the deadlock detection. As for Rococo, because it is not affected by boards and blocking, the throughput scales almost linearly, much better than OCC and two-phase locking. Before we end this talk, because this is a very well-studied field, we would like to make a simple comparison with recent works on distributed databases. Because we target at strict serializability, which distinguishes us from systems that offer weaker semantics. And for a system that has strict serializability, Spanner and HStore are based on traditional protocols of two-phase locking and OCC, not like Rococo having a novel protocol. As for Kelvin, Kelvin has its own concurrency control mechanism. It uses a decentralized sequencing layer to do pre-order locking which makes it difficult to scale, while Rococo uses a decentralized dependency tracking that naturally scales, and this makes the two systems fundamentally different. In conclusion, we have seen today that conventional protocols perform poorly with contention increasing the system, and Rococo uses dependency tracking, reordering, 
and reorder transactions into a strictly serializable order without aborting or blocking. And this makes Rococo outforms with growing contentions and in a complex scaling workload. Well, thank you all for listening. You can, our poster sessions tonight, you are very welcome to drop by, and you can also check our code on GitHub. Thank you. Uh, Atoladia Google. Um, I was wondering what happens if the two servers get the sort of the commit message and they realize well, you have you have a two-phase transaction, right? You have prepare phase, commit phase. When you get the commit transaction, commit message, and they can they realize that deferred ordering doesn't work. Do you then resort to two-phase locking or OCC, or is it that your offline checking would just disallow this? Uh, the short answer is that offline checking would disallow this. But a longer answer would be, yes, there can also, of course, there can be workloads that can generate the cycles of which all immediate pieces at runtime. So we can actually not reorder this. So the thing is we can, uh, we can detect this at the offline chain before runtime and resolve to conventional protocols to solve this problem. Actually, I think I have a slide about this, how to merge pieces together. Here you can see from the slide. If you have two immediate pieces in transaction and they cause conflict with each other, you can use a two-phase locking to just execute the pieces inside this cycle, not the whole transaction. And this two-phase locking as a partial part, as a part in the start phase, and then you just do the regular Rococo thing later, so. But you do re require that it be detected by the offline checking algorithm. Yes, okay. yes, that's the trade-off. Uh, Rajesh Nishtala from Facebook. Um, when the tracking is done at the server, you send back the information back to the clients, and then the clients are send that very similar thing back. Why can't the conflicts be resolved at the clients before it, they sent back to the server? So why can't all the clients say, I'm in, a con I'm in a contention state, I'm gonna decide the order in the commit phase, and all of them then send back the correct order that they want? Yes, this question relates to a possible optimizations in Rococo, which, uh, because we have just shown the example how the protocol works with a very trivial example. In fact, in real system, the, it could be much more complex because all the dependence graph, you cannot tra track all the dependence graph and you can only track part of them. So it is important when you can decide this transaction, the order for this transaction. Actually, it's not that the server, the, transa uh, the order of execution may be decided earlier than, the, than this server. So we have a mixture of waiting and uh, uh, inquiry mechanism, plus uh, we divide each transaction into three status. Each status uh, identifies how many graphs it should include in the, in the request and what the what, whether the order is decided or not. So it can be decided before the servers. Uh, the short answer is it can be decided earlier. Yes. Thank you. Phil, last question. Phil Bernstein, Microsoft Research. Um, on slide, the, the performance graph on slide 22, where it peaks at 6,000 transactions per second and then drops off, um, was that total throughput or is that per server? There's, uh, no, there's nothing on the screen here. Oh. But, um, something. Uh. I just, I guess what I didn't understand is you were, you were highlighting the fact that after you've already gotten peak throughput, your algorithm performs better. And I don't understand why I would ever want to run in a region where I'm not getting peak throughput. I mean, why wouldn't I do, why wouldn't I, why wouldn't I do admission control to make sure I never went past that 6,000 per second? and who cares what's going on on the right side of the graph? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Because I was your looking for Your performance slide. is peaking at right. 6,000 per second, right? Right. And you're showing that when I add servers and now the performance degrades, oh, your you're system talking about performs better. And I don't understand why. Scalability? 
Yeah, no? I saw I saw that one. Okay, maybe we take it offline. I just don't right. understand. You, see, you seem to be operating in a thrashing region and claiming that you're getting better performance when the system is thrashing than the other algorithms. But I just don't understand why you would ever want to run in that region. But I, maybe I'm just misunderstanding what you're measuring. We'll talk about it offline. Let's take the question offline. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you.